<laughs> um, our first guest of the day is Guillaume Mupesh. He's co-founder and CEO of Lemless, the coolest sales automation platform ever created. He's also the CEO of LemTalk and LemPod. So when it comes to growing a SaaS company in B2B sales, he knows some pretty cool tricks. I'll hand it over to you, Guillaume. Thanks a lot, Sarah, for the intro. Uh, I hope every, everyone is, uh, is going well. Sorry for my face. I had a bike accident, but uh, I'm alive, which is <laughs> the most important part. Uh, so I'm going to start sharing my screen. I will share like all the slides with you. So don't, uh, don't stress too much on taking notes. You'll get everything in the Slack community, which uh, Sarah mentioned. Um, ask all your question. I'm going to stick around also after for, uh, for a Q&A. So guys, like uh, I'm happy to answer everything. It's going to be pretty exciting. So, oops. Okay, should be, should be working fine. So today we're gonna talk about how to build a B2B outbound sales strategy from scratch. Uh, as Sarah said, I'm the CEO and co-founder at Lemlist. And in less than two years, we acquired more than 10,000 customers worldwide. And we used extensively outbound, which allowed us without funding to reach 1 million ARR in less than two years. So in today's plan, we're gonna see three things and I'm gonna give on each part really like actionable uh, advice and tips. So you would be able after this talk to really like do exactly the same thing that we did and potentially like keep growing your company. So the first thing is why it's essential to define your target. Then we'll go and check how to grow your LinkedIn profile, especially in B2B, it's like the most important part. And finally, how to do cold email that get replies. So target audience. Personas, ICP, so ideal customer profile, you probably heard about them, but it's super important to remind you that it's the most important thing when growing a company, it's to know who is your ideal customer profile. Once you have that, your conversion rate will increase and potentially you will drive more sales. So what an ICP look like? Here it's an example of one of our CP. So you need to know the goal and objective of your ICP. How did they hear about you? what their path to purchase, and also what could hold them back. On top of that, you need a profile, name them, put the photos, et cetera, et cetera. Photos, you can take them from your existing customers if you want on LinkedIn, or I'm gonna share also a few tips on how to get to know your customers if you don't have any at the moment. So LinkedIn Sales Navigator is really like a great way to segment your targets by adding like as many filters as you can. So for example, it can be the industry, it can be the type of uh, the location, it can be uh, the geography, so location, it can be um, the, 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 the growth of the company. So for example, if you're targeting startups, you're gonna go into the, the, the headcount growth and try to see like that the, the thing, the, the company is growing by X percent every year. Then you can also use like Facebook. So you can run ads in order to really like see whether or not which ad is performing the best towards your value proposition and see which are the best results in order to get like uh, the, the audience that you need for your, your product. On top of that, I think it's something that I really like. It's to use um, relevant communities. So for example, here it's a, a SaaS um, community on Facebook called SaaS Growth Hacks. So here, if you're targeting, for example, SaaS founders, you can go on the community and see how people are interacting with each other. What are they saying? How exactly are they interacting between each other? So get a lot of information that you will be able to reuse directly here. So in the, in the part where it says what could hold him back or in the profile section, you see that there are a few things that are kind of quotes from existing customers. And that's the type of thing that you could take from this type of communities. Then when you grow, you could build your own communities. And that's kind of what we did with, uh, with Lemlist. So we have the biggest community around sales automation, which is called the sales automation family. And here, every time like uh, we can ask questions to our audience and get to know them better. So when, whenever we're building like uh, a product or a new feature, we have like direct insights from our customers and we know what's working and what's not. Because in the end, what you wanna do is build a product or a service that people want and need. So a little hack that you might not know, but that is super useful, is to also check. Uh, so this is an example and a screenshot from uh, Indeed. So check the sales offer. So let's say, for example, that you're targeting VP sales. 
you can go into Indeed and check like what the person is required to do. Here you will find what would be the existing challenges of the person and that's something that you can leverage into your value proposition. Another criteria is basically their qualification so you can understand and add more and more things into the profile section of your persona. With these two things, you'll be able to really like get the type of mission this person are gonna have, uh, know their challenges. So if you know their challenges, you can offer the right solution. If you offer the right solution, it's obviously easier to build relationship and close them eventually down the line. So now the, the next step, now that we've gone a bit fast on, on that part, but I think it's something that you kind of knew, but it's how to grow your LinkedIn profile. So in order to grow your LinkedIn profile, you need two things. LinkedIn is amazing because you can connect with pretty much anyone in the world. And here, for example, if I had put in like um, head of growth pretty much everywhere, like or in the US, I would have around like 1 million results. And I can connect with these people automatically using a tool called Phantom Buster. So automatically, I'm going to send an invite to relevant people that are my target audience. On top of that, I'm asking, you know, like um, this is so when people sign up to Lemlist, they get a message which allow them to connect with me as the CEO of the company. So they can send me basically a specific message. So if I've got like my users and my targets, it means that I have people who already kind of know me and people who don't know me and the people who know me, which are our users, are gonna cheer a bit more for me because they kind of know the content, they know what we built, etc. And it means that people who don't know me and accept to connect with me will see even more my content. And that's actually the next step you need to export them with content. So a lot of people in the early days of LinkedIn were actually like doing things wrong. Like, uh, and I see still a lot of people doing that, which are kind of promoting all the time, all the time, like um, their company, et cetera, on LinkedIn. Whereas in the end, what really matters is to provide value. So here, for example, it was a post I made, like I think uh, yeah, a month ago, and it was, should I keep prospecting during the current crisis? That's a question you know a lot of people are asking themselves. It's intriguing. And obviously this post got a lot of engagement because it was very relevant to what people were asking themselves. So how, do you, how exactly do you write like great posts? The first thing is you need a catch, catchy intro. So here, for example, a question is very catchy. As you can see, like, can you make more than 1 million in revenue in your first year of joining a startup? Obviously you wanna click and see more. Then use an image or video in order to really like uh, drive attention. Uh, when people are scrolling down their feed, you know, all they see sometimes is just text. So having an image can really like help you stand out. Finally, you need to write like about topics you have experience with. So for example, like I'm an expert when it comes to, to cold emails and writing like good cold emails. So here I received like a, a very good one call, like cold email from, from someone. So I decided, okay, I'm going to take all the things in this cold in this cold email that is great and I'm going to go really in depth to explain why it's working and why did I answer to that email. So as you can see like the the post is just like bringing a lot of value to my audience and since my audience is also my target whenever I'm providing value to them it drives interest, it drives traffic to our website, it drives signups, it drives more and more people like reaching out to me on LinkedIn and it drives pretty much like ton of leads. So another thing that's super important. So here I'm just giving you tips of things that you can do. Since LinkedIn is a, is a social network, connecting with other people. Here we did a, a webinar with Aaron Ross. So for me, it was important to mention him just because, you know, like we met kind of on LinkedIn, that's where we connected. And eventually now you, we decided to make a webinar together. So that's really important. Uh, and also like this, this um, for this blog post, we're actually doing, um, I mean, sorry for this uh, LinkedIn post, we're actually doing something where um, we were allowing people to get the link of the event only if they were commenting something. So that's kind of a trick to build like really like a viral post where if you want people to get something from you, you, you ask them to comment. So you would create what we call the bandwagon effect, meaning that when people see other people commenting something, they're going to want to do the same thing. And the more people are doing this, the, the higher the engagement is. And eventually, before you do that, obviously you need to kind of hook them. And here, as you can see on the post, I was really like talking about things that people were interested in the moment. So it was how to grow predictable and scalable revenue in 2020. 
we were also talking about the crisis, which I think was key uh, for people in the and is still key in the in the last few months. And finally, like developing the powerful outbound sales strategy. So because the topic was interested, and the only thing that I was asking people to give is a comment for people, it was like really easy to comment. And in total, we had like around like 500 comments and something like a thousand like and 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 reactions. And on top of that, it's important also to use hashtags just because, you know, like uh, some people are following hashtags and it helps you basically like stand out. Um, I think this post was actually trending for the sales, um, sales hashtag for a while, which drove us even more traffic and, and people interested. So um, here I had put it like uh, take a screenshot, but since I'm going to share the slide in the community, no need to do that. But I wanted to really give you like some actionable things that you can reuse on your own post. So here it was like example of intros that you can have because uh, the intros are like really important. For example, you can start with sentences like, did you know that? Wondering how to, uh, I want to tell you a story how, and then these are like the beginning. And finally, like you need to have uh, something that's a bit of a hook. So for example, imagine you're dealing with a 20% conversion drop. If you start seeing a post like this, what you will do is definitely like click on read more just because you know like it's interesting you know it's intriguing and you want to know and that's kind of the feeling you want to trigger to your audience whenever they are checking your content and um so this this is a part like uh, you will get access to and you'll be able to to reuse in the future so on top of that uh, as sarah mentioned i'm also the founder of uh, of two other SaaS company one including which is lempod so it's a tool that allows you to get a little boost in uh, or i mean a real boost <laughs> in your linkedin content so essentially what you can do is uh, join pods uh, pods are a group of people that are gonna automatically engage with your content when you post that way you're gonna get a much bigger boost and people the reach will be bigger and hence more and more people are going to see your content, which I think is, uh, is the most important part because the more people see your content, the more people add you in their network, the more people connect with you. And, uh, and that's really like important. So because results are important, uh, likes, um, comments, et cetera, reach, views, all of this, it's vanity metric. But for us, uh, it resulted in 1 million views on posts. Uh, I have like more than 19K, uh, 19,000 followers, which is not huge, but it's still pretty good because I started really like investing on LinkedIn about like a year ago. Uh, I'm, I've been doing like, um, I've been positioned myself as a really like thought leader in the sales uh, automation space, which is really great. And in terms of revenue driven, it's, uh, it's counted in, uh, in tens of thousands of euros and a lot more opportunities coming, especially because it drove a lot of international speaking opportunity, et cetera, et cetera, which are great when it comes to user acquisition. Um, now for the, the last part, which is kind of, uh, I think, my specialty. So <laughs> it's uh, the really like the, the cold email best practices. So I wanted to share with you some uh, things that you can automate uh, in order to really like grow your company, build like a, a stronger brand. And no matter actually like... Uh, this is in B2B, but some example can be also done in B2C if you have like a, a brand in B2C. Um, so cold emailing, what else? Um, cold emails, what I love about it is that you can get in touch with pretty much anyone in the world. Getting the email is really easy. You have like, I think, a billion tools out there that allows you, whether it's Chrome extension, like uh, cold CRM, uh, lead IQ, etc., that allows you to get the email directly from a LinkedIn profile or even databases like Upleads, uh, Leadfuse, or even Zoom Info, et cetera. You, finding an email now is really easy. However, building relationship is something that takes time. And most of the people who are trying to do cold email don't really think about um, building relationship and think that email and cold email is just a way to sell, which is not true. Sorry, just need to take a little sip of water. Um, so even though you need, you need to focus on the ROI when you do your cold email campaign, 
always remember that cold emailing, your goal is to get a meeting. It's not to, to do like what we call click to sales, meaning like clicking in an email in order to drive sales. It doesn't work that way. You need a meeting, you need to build relationship, and eventually later on, you'll be able to sell. So, uh, up, sorry. <laughs> Here, we're going to see the first uh, use case, which is called the art of networking. Networking is key just because like, you need to meet with like-minded people as yourself. Sarah mentioned that there is something uh, that you can pair up here with, uh, with some people. I really highly advise you to do it because networking can help you meet your next customers or someone that can help you find new customers and get a referral. So it's really, really important. So what we're going to do here is find your target on LinkedIn, send the connection request automatically, find the email that addresses and the data also automatically, and then send an email sequence. All of that is automated. So I'm going to share like this little secret recipe with you and the step-by-step -step guide. So you're going to need three tools for that, Phantom Buster, Drop Contact, and Lemlist. So the first step is to find the relevant target. So here, go on LinkedIn, do your search, whether it's on the regular LinkedIn or Sales Navigator. I personally advise Sales Navigator for basically like more filters, so more basically like uh, research focus. Then uh, here, it was an example for head of growth in Paris working in the SaaS space. Then it's about to create like uh, an email campaign so here it was very like uh, straightforward. My goal was essentially to A-B test two things, lunch versus growth lunch. And uh, here the goal is for people to click on the video. So as you can see, subject line is casual. So something that I could write essentially to someone I know. I think this is a part like uh, where it's really important. Create casual uh, subject line so people open your email. Second step, intro sentence was really like clearly stating what I was reaching out to them. So I was checking your profile on LinkedIn and I thought I would reach out with a, a video for a change. As you can see, there is like a, a personalized template here. For those of you who have never used Lemlist, this part is uh, essentially where um, we take automatically a screenshot of the pros prospect you're reaching out to and also insert like their first name. So it's an example GIF here where you can see that based on the person I'm reaching out to, there is their like website screenshot popping in and their name as well is changing based on the person. On top of that, there is a little trick here to drive up the, the click rate, which is essentially to ask a question just after the video. So you see like not too much text, a video and a question. The question, what do you think? It doesn't mean anything if you don't click on the video because you know, like the goal here is to trigger curiosity. And obviously like if you see, there's a video for you with your name and your website screenshot. And then below there's, what do you think? Obviously you're like a bit curious to know, like, uh, and be able to answer that question. So you're gonna want to click. When people click, they would end up on the dynamic landing pages with again, their logo, uh, their first name, and finally like a, a calendar integration where they can book uh, a meeting directly. So here, the part of automation, it's essentially all done in Phantom Buster who connected all our tools together where you can basically put everything. So you put your LinkedIn search, you put, uh, you connect your lamb list, you connect your drop contact to find the emails and automatically, basically it's going to add the people on LinkedIn, find their email, scrape their profile, push it to lamb list, And finally the campaign will be sent. So all of that is automatically done. And the results we had were like 96% open rate, 83% click rate. Um, and basically a third of people were interested, which generated, so I met like 11 of them and it generated like 10,000, uh, yeah, more than $10,000 worth of deals um, in recurring revenue. So in, in LTV, it's much higher. And eventually, like uh, this is the type of things on top of that, because for me, it was just networking initially. Uh, and I was able to share a lot of knowledge and help uh, other people also as well as they helped me. So it was really like about learning and about sharing. And this is kind of what I really liked. Um, so why it's really important. And I think what I liked about this story is in the end, what I, was, what I wanted to do when I asked people for lunch was really about building relationships. So in my video, I was asking them, like, I want to help you grow. I want to help you with challenges. And maybe you'll be able to teach me a few things also where you're good at, where I'm good at. 
and we can share and, and help us like evolve and grow. So I was really, really trying to build relationships. And eventually when we started chatting, uh, we understood that we had like some parts where we could help each other. And if you trust someone who you've just built a relationship with, this is where you close the deal. And this is actually what happened. But in the, in the end, I didn't really do it uh, for the ROI of getting deal closed. I was more doing it in order to meet people, potential new hires, et cetera, like the, the kind of role of a CEO. But in the end, it generated tons of deal, which I think is, uh, is really cool. And it comforted me in the way that we need to build relationship with people in order to be able to sell. So second, uh, second uh, use case is getting on podcast. So this worked for both B2B and B2C. So um, podcasts are an amazing way to essentially to get uh, in front of your audience. Um, you can leverage also like the audience of the person who built the podcast, which is pretty amazing. But the thing is like the, the podcast gets tons of requests to have like uh, CEOs on it. And it's sometimes difficult to get interviewed. Um, so here we decided to prepare like a, a Google sheet with the email, the first name, and finally, a sentence. So the sentence means that for each podcast, we needed to have a personalized sentence. So you see the data, classic data, when you do like prospecting, and the sentence is ultra personalization. So this is a template we used. Um, essentially, intriguing subject line, uh, people doing podcast love stories. So the, the subject line was like, I've got a story for your first name. Adding the first name obviously increased essentially like the the reply rate. Uh, the intro sentence were about the person, so quickly introducing myself and finally saying how exceptional and how amazing their podcast is, which is something I truly believed. Then there were the ultra personalized sentence in order to show that we did some research. And after that, it's um, the reason why is basically I'm reaching out. And then it's a bit more context and also why is it should choose us. So eventually you need to be prospect centric. So you know, you're reaching out someone who has an audience and his goal is to get more traffic, more audience. So in that case, what I decided to say is, yeah, I, I want to share something super practical to our audience. It's going to be like uh, very cool for you. And eventually we'll be able to share it also with our audience as well. And this is what I had here. So some social proof got 1 million plus views on LinkedIn. Uh, we have a community of more than 6,000 people and I position myself as an expert. And on top of that, uh, I was adding uh, references just so people can double check it if they want it. So a lot of link here, but essentially it was a great way to, to show that we were like serious uh, people and that we will bring tons of value to their audience. And here again, really high open rates, 38% replied. So it generated also a lot of opportunity uh, we had 10 plus podcasts uh, with only one campaign. So it means like we reached out, we reached, sorry, as uh, again, like tens of thousands of people just with this one campaign. And uh, again, thousands of euros worth of revenue when it comes to uh, in, rev in MR also. So pretty cool. Uh, guys, thanks a lot for, for your time. I'm going to be, I hope I didn't go too fast. I know there were a lot of slides. I'm going to share everything. And uh, if you have questions, I'm, uh, I'm still here. So <laughs> you can go ahead. Awesome. Yeah, it looks like we do have a couple of questions. Um, if you guys do have any other questions, take the time now to pop them in the Q&A. But of course, as Guillaume said, if you can't think of any right away, uh, Guillaume actually has a dedicated channel within our Slack community. So he'll be in there and ready to answer all your questions. Um, my colleague did share the link to that in the chat. So have a look for that there. Um, but our first question comes from Angela. Um, and she was asking about your LinkedIn posts. Do you... Yeah pay to promote your posts or was it all organic growth? No. So we don't. So basically like, uh, I do not pay. I I've never used like paid ads. Um, what we do is, uh, organic definitely. And we also use Lampod, which is, uh, the tool I mentioned in order to automate the engagement of the, the first, let's say like 50 people engaging. And that way it just boosts the post. And after that, the reach is much higher and people like see it. So engage, etc. Nice. Um, our next question was from Rod Hinn. Uh, he said, how do you coordinate your LinkedIn content management with other content like YouTube, blog posts, et cetera? Um, how do they relate? He said, I feel like you have so many content, content channels to keep <laughs> up with. It's hard to imagine how you keep up. So how do you manage that? 
Yeah. Um, to be honest, um, it's it's just I think it's it's a habit. It's part of these things where I know that I need to post like two to three times on LinkedIn every week. Um, I plan my content quite in advance. So usually I, I do like uh, sprints, like we work in sprint, both in dev and in growth team. And essentially like uh, I do like once a year, like a, a content sprint when I'm going to think about like uh, at least a hundred posts that I can make on LinkedIn and I'm going to outline, outline pretty much everything and prepare all these posts. So I know like what to post and in which order. And on top of that, sometimes when I just like see something interesting and I want to write about it, I'll just go on LinkedIn and write about it, you know? So, yeah. Hey, can I ask a follow on to that one? Yeah. Tell me about these content sprints. So what, what does that look like? How long do you take? Is this a, a week in a log cabin somewhere and you just disappear off the face of the earth or? <laughs> <laughs> no, so essentially like, uh, so, it, it's going to be through like two to three weeks because I do a lot of videos. So I'm going to spend time like uh, writing scripts. So the first step is finding the topics. Uh, once we found the topic uh, and I've outlined, let's say like the, the main title of, um, of what I want to talk about. So for example, like startup stress or uh, conflict between founders or cold email tips, et cetera. Once I have the topic, I'm going to spend time writing the scripts. And once I've got the scripts, I'm going to spend like uh, two to three days in a studio and record like tons of videos. And after that, I can die for a week or something because <laughs> I'm usually exhausted. <laughs> nice. Cool. And so you do that. I'm sorry. I'm just letting my annoying curiosity take over here. I feel like this is my podcast again. So everybody <laughs> like back off with your questions. This is my turn. Um, and so you do that. Is it how, how frequently do you do that? You said I, heard, I thought I heard once a year. Yeah, it's once a year for my for my own like personal LinkedIn. So for my personal lending, it's like once a year and I spend like, let's say two weeks in total. Yeah. Uh, and then for our content, when it comes to blog, lamb list, et cetera, I've got like a, a team managing that and they usually do it like, uh, I would say it's a one week sprint every quarter or something like that. Gotcha. And the, for that one week sprint, is that 100% of your focus? Yeah. Or like cool. 80%, just 20% to run the day to day. Gotcha. It's a lot of content to create, man. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> you take a notes, Colin? <laughs> uh, it's it's honestly it's something I've always uh, struggled with is like trying to mix in creating content, like writing things, getting ideas down, and sort of managing the CEO job at the same time. It's like your context switching constantly, and it's I find it once you're in that mode, it's I'm good to like sink into it, but it takes a while to like get into there. Yeah, definitely. Perfect. Looks like we got a question from Damien. Yeah. Sorry, I froze there. Otherwise, I would have picked it up. How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> Sarah was sleeping again. Thank you, yeah. Sarah. <laughs> oh, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah. Okay. Damien's question. Uh, what's the greatest challenge you've had developing your method? Um, I think it's figuring out like the... like. Okay, so there were several challenges. First, I'm French, so I have like a very strong French accent. French people love to, love to make fun of my French accent. So for me, it's like tough, you know, whenever I was doing videos just to get like uh, people, you know, like just to kind of mock a bit like or all this type of thing, especially in the beginning when you don't have an audience. So my first likes were coming from my mom and my girlfriend. So, you know, it's like, eh, <laughs> is it really good content? I'm not sure. And then eventually, you know, like you keep iterating. So the biggest challenge is really like finding content that works and the structure of content that works. So like, how exactly do you structure a post in order to get engagement? How does the algorithm work so you get like more engagement, et cetera, et cetera. All the things takes, it's like a, a craft, you know, like it needs time to master and eventually you'll get there. You just need like to be patient. Cool. Uh, Francesco asks, uh, what do you suggest is the most effective subject lines for emails? Yeah, so it, it really depends on the context. So as I said, like you can write casual, like uh, casual, like subject lines. So for example, thing that work well are coffee, question mark, or virtual coffee, question mark, lunch, question mark, all these type of things that you could write to someone you know. Um, if you want to be casual and bring value, you can say like feedback for company name. So for example, if I see like uh, an email saying like feedback from Lemlists, I'll be like, okay, I want to check this out. You know, like, what are they going to ask me, et cetera. And another thing that could really work well also is being like super specific. So for example, if you knew that you're going to an event and you have the list of the attendees, what you could say is like, 
let's meet at event name, first name. So it's a long subject line, but since it's super specific and targeted, usually it works really well. Nice. Um, we have another question here from, oh, I can't see the questions anymore. Colin, could you ask the one from Liana? Yeah, I'll cover you. Um, so Liana has a high open rate during uh, cold emailing with Lemlist for, for her digital marketing agency. Open rate is 75%. Um, how can I close sales if they don't reply to my emails, but click the links? Yeah. So I think there are like several things. Uh, the first thing is follow up. So we say money is in the follow up and that's something true. I didn't really talk about it like during this presentation because we didn't have like so much time, but usually what you need to do in, in a campaign is to go through at least like five follow ups uh, for email. And then on top of that, you need to understand that some people just don't like email. Some people prefer calls, some people prefer LinkedIn. So the goal here is once you've done with your campaign, is to go through all the people that are, let's say, like the hottest lead and call them, for example, or message them on LinkedIn. Once you've done that, uh, you're going to be able like, to really increase your conversion rate. But email should already help you like, book at least between like 20% of the person you're reaching out to. And if it does not, it's, it's potentially because you haven't really targeted well enough and you need to rewrite a bit, rework sorry, a bit on that part. Cool. Thank you. Uh, and last question here for now is from Mehdi. Uh, in the current scenario, how should the cold email introduction go? I, I imagine that's kind of relating to COVID and, and the current mm. climate. Yeah. 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 I think like, um, so what's super important is like, if we, if we have to look at the, the COVID prospection strategy, if we call it that way, uh, I think the first step is to get closer to your existing customers. Get closer to your existing customers and know what their pain is now that they're facing the crisis. Once you understand, because a lot of companies are facing like new challenges, new problems. And if you can like really get close to them and understand their new challenges, your outreach is going to totally change because your, um, your USP or unit selling proposition uh, a month ago or two months ago is going to be different now that the crisis has come because your customers are going to face new challenges. So once you gathered enough data and value from your existing customer, you kind of become an expert on the topic. Because let's say, for example, if my clients are all in the travel industry and if I spend time chatting with them, I know that they're going to face tons of new issues and I can understand like, okay, what are they doing to solve this issue? Once you have that, you can get in touch with potential prospect and tell them, hey, I was just wondering, like I've been chatting with the top leaders in X industry and they really like uh, gave me at least like two things that they were doing at the moment, which are A, blah, 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 B, blah, blah, blah. I've actually like uh, taken down like some notes and building a report about it. I'd love to hop on a call with you and have a chat to know what you're facing and if potentially I can bring you solutions. So, you know, here I'm just like bringing tons of value first value in the email, then like, so this part is basically like the teasing part. Then I say that I have more. And the only thing that I want to do is give you more. And once you're there, the person obviously like they saw that, okay, you're potentially an expert. Uh, you know something, you mentioned like people from the industry. So they're, they're going to be willing, you know, to talk to you. And eventually like, this is where you can start closing and, uh, and build better relationships. Yeah. Awesome. Well, I think that's, oh, is there any more? No, that was the last, <laughs> oh, one popped in. Okay, <laughs> Christopher, here we go. Uh, sorry to have missed the beginning of this session. Will you have a recap online later? Or, okay, okay, he's asking uh, if we'll have a recap. So all the slides, Christopher, will be available uh, in the Slack community. You'll yeah. be able to have a look at them there. And if you have any more kind of specific questions for Guillaume, you can also ask him in his dedicated Q&A channel. Um, yeah. So don't worry, you haven't missed anything. And there will be recordings of all of this as well. So <laughs> don't worry. Oh, he says, great, thank you. Awesome. Uh, Julia from our team also says you can watch replays here and she's just shared the link in the chat. So Christopher, if you wanna grab it there. But I think for now that concludes this, this first session. Thank you so much, Guillaume. Uh, great talk, great. Awesome. Kind of LinkedIn tips, great <laughs> prospecting tips. I know that we're definitely going to go chew those over as a team and, and see what we can implement. Uh, Colin was definitely very interested, as you can see. Um, thank you so much to everyone who asked questions. Um, that was awesome. Great engagement first thing in the morning. Um, 
And yeah, any other questions, you can head over to Guillaume's dedicated Slack channel. Um, it's hashtag QA underscore Guillaume, and he'll be hanging out there for a while to answer your questions. Um, in about eight minutes, we have our next talk, which is, hey, salespeople, how to double your reply rates with Jeremy Donovan. So if you're hanging out in the stream, in the Twitch stream, just hang tight and we'll be there in eight minutes. Uh, if you are going to join the Zoom call, then have a look in your email for the link to that and you can join us there in eight minutes. But thank you so much, Guillaume. Thanks a lot, Sarah. Thanks, Colleen. Have a great day. Bye-bye. Great to have you. Thanks, buddy. Thanks. Bye-bye.